Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. It's now time to take a look at news stories making headlines around the globe. We begin in Nigeria, where representatives of the organized private sector, OPS, are expressing optimism that the early presentation of the 2020 appropriation bill by President Muhammadu Buhari would pave the way for its early passage and subsequently ensure an improved implementation of the budget. Reacting to the presentation of the fiscal bill to the National Assembly, the representative said yesterday's event signified the return to January-December budget cycle, which could give enough time for budget implementation and make it more conducive for other stakeholders in the economy to plan their activities. Buhari yesterday presented a 10.33 trillion naira proposed budget for the 2020 fiscal year at a joint sitting of the National Assembly for approval. As he presented the appropriation bill for consideration, the Senate made 16 recommendations on the medium-term expenditure framework, MTEF, that will guide the final approval of the 2020 budget. So this is good to see that Senator Ahmed Lama, the president of the Senate, did say that we will return to a January to December budget. This is the first step in the process. Obviously, it depends on a lot of other factors, such as ministers, prom sex, and what have you, representatives of MDA showing up promptly to defend their budgets. But so far, so good. Yeah. Well, I think one, I mean, it's um, an indication that the Nigerian government, the federal government is trying to do something differently. You will recall that the 8th National Assembly, one of the uh, major areas of difference between President Buhari and that assembly, was when he accused the uh, President of the Senate and the Speaker of the House of Representatives uh, for, of a lack of patriotism because of how they handled you know, the budget process. It took almost six months uh, for uh, the uh, National Assembly to be able to pass the budget at the time. And President Buhari subsequently held the leadership of the National Assembly responsible. Now, this time around, I said the federal government is trying to do something differently because at that time, when there was that altercation between the National Assembly and the presidency, the National Assembly also said that the uh, presidency did not play its part, did not present the budget, you know, early enough. So what the uh, presidency has tried to do now is to act early, promptly, and to ensure that, you know, the uh, National Assembly will have enough time. We will expect that this time around, we will not witness the kind of uh, crisis we have seen in the past, which affected budget performance, which have affected the passing of the budget, and which affected service delivery. And at this time, the National Assembly will also act quickly. Already the Senate has already uh, you know, made a number of recommendations with, the, with regard to the medium-term uh, expenditure framework. But what it has done basically is to accept uh, the basic parameters that the, uh, the uh, federal government proposed, which in this case will be, you know, uh, over 10 trillion naira uh, budget, um, emphasis on uh, a benchmark of $57 per, uh, per barrel uh, for uh, crude oil, and also um, uh, about 2.18 million barrels per day in terms of uh, production. Those are the basics. The questions that you can ask is that, you know, a benchmark price of $57 per barrel. Is it realistic? Is it not too ambitious? Given the volatility that we have seen in the, uh, uh, in the oil market, given the fact that uh, OPEC is still uh, capping uh, uh, oil supply. Secondly, 2.18 uh, million barrels per day. Is it also realistic? These are issues uh, that the National Assembly will have to look at. And then 305, 305 Naira to the dollar. Is it also a realistic, you know, uh, forex uh, benchmark? These are questions that we ask. But if you look at what the uh, president has proposed, he's talking about uh, sustainable growth and uh, job creation. On the surface of it, good objectives, right? But, you know, are the parameters right? I ask that question again. And then if you look at what is being proposed again, the uh, capital expenditure is still lower than the current expenditure. You know, over... Over two trillion naira will be devoted to debt service. Uh, over, over another two trillion naira plus will be devoted to uh, some other things. What you have left at the end of the day for recurrent expenditure is over four million. So capital expenditure again holds the uh, short end of the stick. So if the president is talking about promoting prosperity, promoting growth, we not you know invest more in capital expenditure. However. 
in his presentation yesterday, the president made it clear that, you know, there will be no new projects, that the focus of the administration will be to complete uh, new projects. And if that is the case, perhaps uh, that will help us. He also talked about helping the poor and the vulnerable, which is a consistent point uh, that he has been uh, making. But of course, as to the details, the real details, you know, that will be provided, as the president himself pointed out, uh, by the Minister of Budget, Finance, and, uh, and uh, National Planning. Finance. Mm. I think you've broken it down pretty well, Docs. I would say, like you did, Tundun, that honestly, it's just good to see the National Assembly taking a step in the, di um, in the right direction right now. So finally, we will have a budget that is set for the actual year. And I think that's quite positive, and I want to go on that. Well, the other part of the presentation by the President, of course, was his presentation before the National Assembly of the uh, Fiscal Strategy Bill. Uh, on that is, of course, the main item, as I see it, is the proposal to increase uh, VAT, value added tax, uh, from 5% to 7.5%. Uh, but the president has said, well, this is not to put pressure on the poor and the uh, vulnerable, uh, that government will make effort to see that that is not the case. And I guess that's the reason why in his proposal before the National Assembly, he has tried to uh, expand you know, exemptions uh, from, uh, from VAT. And, you know, previously it was pharmaceuticals and educational materials. Now they've added uh, uh, table water, they've added uh, cereals, they've added wheat, millet, white bread, you know, and a number of, uh, uh, you know, other materials, including poultry products, including uh, eggs, including vegetables, you know. And I guess, you know, the objective is to make sure that the poor, uh, poor people, vulnerable people, uh, do not bear the brunt. But as you said, you know, a budget proposal remains a proposal. It is now for the National Assembly to consider it. And I hope that the discussion will be robust and it will be open and that Nigerians, who are also stakeholders, will be encouraged to make input into that discussion. We certainly hope so. Now the Nigerian military on Tuesday described ongoing negotiations with bandits by governors of the Northwest as political and not a military decision. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tsukoburutai said that despite peace deals with the bandits, the military remained committed to flushing out the outlaws in the north. This comes just as the panel set up by the defense headquarters, DHQ, to unravel the circumstances surrounding the killing of three police detectives and two civilians by soldiers of 93 Battalion Tukum Taraba State, identified lack of adherence to standard operational procedure as the cause of the brutal killings of the policemen and civilians. Well, I think this is fairly straightforward. You yeah. know, we had expressed reservations that should the priority of government be negotiation with bandits, or should it be, you know, arresting bandits and checking impunity and making sure that the rule of law prevails and the, the weight of the law is brought to bear on persons who promote any form of banditry or heinous crimes uh, within Nigerian territory. So uh, this is nice, hearing this from the chief of army staff, who only recently was quoted as saying, you know, there should be ideological warfare, yeah. and our pastors and uh, imams and clerics and uh, animists uh, should come and assist the military, which in itself, on the surface of it, will look like an admission of defeat. So this uh, track that he has taken now, to say that, yes, the governors are taking a political uh, uh, approach uh, to the matter, but that, that does not stop the military from doing its work. We expect and we hope that the necessary support will be given to the Nigerian military to win the war against terror, against kidnapping, against banditry, you know, and that's the kind of thing that will reassure us that indeed a lot is being done to ensure the welfare and security of the Nigerian people. Absolutely. Right. Then in Nigeria, gunmen dressed in military camouflage abducted nine persons during a brazen attack on the Peggy resettlement community located in Kuje Area Council of the Federal Capital Territory. Members of the community who confirmed the attack said the kidnappers struck at about 8 p.m. on Monday night. Chairman of Peggy Community Development Association also confirmed the onslaught, said that the community was caught unawares by the attackers. Some of the kidnappers have already established contact with the families of some of the kidnapped persons, demanding 10 million naira ransom. 
Meanwhile, gunmen have also abducted two policemen in Ingo, community of Andoni, local government area of River State. According to reports, the officers were abducted on Monday and whisked to an unknown location. The identities of the policemen are yet to be ascertained. So, yes, just after the statement by the by Lieutenant General Burutai, yeah. we have this. It's a reminder, a stark reminder exactly. of the level of insecurity in this country. Even policemen have been snatched. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, in Andoni uh, River State. I mean, I think it's most unfortunate. It's very sad. Uh, on a daily basis, we get reminded of how vulnerable, you know, every Nigerian is. The other day, it's uh, Samson Siasia's mother, who was kept by a kidnappers for about two months. You know, and you need to read the... Uh, you know, the um, old woman's uh, statement on what she went through. Just for you to know that, you know, we have a very serious crisis on our hands. And now policemen are also getting abducted. Kidnapping has become some kind of uh, imagined economy. It's like a hobby. You know, a survival, uh, you know, zone for many Nigerians. And I think it's very unfortunate. And it's uh, a reminder to government that, you know, they really need to do something about it. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's all on news headlines.